and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everyone on YouTube watching this video later on for some Golgari Stompy. This is a deck that I've been wanting to play for a few days, but we just haven't been able to get to it. So let's get to it now. What we're doing here is we are trying to take full advantage of Vivian Arcbow Ranger and Rotting Registor together. So we, we tried a Rotting Registor deck earlier in the week, a couple of days ago. It didn't go that well for us, but I, while we were playing that deck, I talked about how I think we just need a lot more creatures uh, to go with the Rotting Registors and also Vivian Arcbow Ranger. So that's what we're going to try. So we can we have the turn two potential of playing Rotting Registor after a Llanowar Elf. So turn one Llanowar Elf, turn two, seven, six. And then if we curve out, luckily, we can go turn three. We could play a Vivian, or actually, technically, we can actually play Galta on turn three after that. But Vivian can put both counters on the Registor and give it Trample. So like turn three, we could play Vivian, put both counters on this Rotting Registor, make it a 9-7 Trample. Or sorry, 9-8. A 9-8 Trample that's attacking right away on turn three that's pretty gross so that's what we got going on here this registrar makes even like steel leaf champion seem like a small creature but you know even going you know same kind of thing if we can curve steel leaf on turn two and then vivian turn three and steel leaf is attacking as a seven six which is also really nice so that's kind of like what our decks decks doing here we got a little bit of card advantage with the vivians in here um also uh we do have to discard a card every upkeep, which is unfortunate. This Vivian, though, with the minus two ability, at least it puts the creature in exile. So it's not actually part of your hand, so you don't have to discard uh, whatever card you put into exile. So that's kind of nice um, there. Also going with a bunch of Vine Mares instead of Nullhide Feroxes here. Because I'm a little worried about playing Nullhide and Arcbow Ranger together, where like if we play null hide first then we won't be able to play the arcbow ranger to put counters on the null hide afterwards kind of thing so i'm going with the vine mare because you know vine mare is hexproof which is nice and the problem with vine mare has kind of always been that it's a five three with emphasis on the three toughness and that three toughness creature can get blocked by other like smaller green creatures and uh, other creatures that it it trades down a lot basically. Trades down with creatures that cost less mana. Well, if you have a 5-3 Hexproof, and then you play the Vivian Arcbow Ranger, put two counters on it, make it a 7-5 Hexproof, and it's with Trample, and suddenly the opponent's not really going to be able to deal with it, because again, it, it has Hexproof. So this card seems awesome with the Arcbow Ranger. It's With playing this deck, it's really possible that I should just be having four Arcbow Rangers in this deck. Like, this could be just, like, the best card in the deck that we should, should just be playing four of, because it makes all these other cards so much better. Uh, Arcbow Ranger is also good with Growth Chamber Guardian, of course, because you get, um, you know, with the counters here, you can go grab other Growth Chamber Guardians from your deck. Um, it's good with Pelt Collector, because whenever Pelt Collector just has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it in general, it has Trample. Um, so, you know, making Pelt Collector big, it's going to be a Trampler all the time. Just a very good card. So it's a very good chance I should just be having four of this card in here. Um, but we're trying it with three here. All right, sideboard has a bunch of um, a bunch of interaction. We have a few, a couple other creatures. I wanted to have like a Carnage Tyrant and a Galta um, in here, where if we want to minus five the the Vivian and go grab like if the battlefield's kind of gummed up, we want to minus five, go grab a Galta, or maybe against control we go grab a Carnage Tyrant. Um, we can do that. So, got a, a few other creatures, or we can go grab a Chupacabra if we need one. All right, that's our deck. Let's get started. You can tell I've been excited to play this. Um, let's definitely change our avatar to Vivian. Beasts we are more basically a Vivian beasts. tribal deck here. Okay. Golgari Stumpe. Do you think any of the Cavalier Cycle would slot into the Bant Arcbow deck? I do like the green cap. All right, so just off the top of my head, the green Cavalier is really nice there because it it helps you ramp, which like getting that extra land into play is something that's definitely really good for the uh, for an Arcbow deck. Um, 
because you know you're going to want to like discard your card from hand but you, you do kind of want to keep hitting land drop so you can arc bow for even more every turn so you can dig farther into the deck and honestly yeah honestly just playing the the cavaliers um and playing risen reefs is probably what you want to be doing with the with the arc bow deck risen reefs just an awesome card You know, that's another card that lets you hit land drops with your creatures, and then you can discard your lands from hand. Uh, the Cavalier of Gales, the blue Cavalier, also is probably a really good arc bow hit. You get to draw three, put two cards back. You can put a card that you want to arc bow into play back on top, for example. Keep whatever card you want to discard. So Steel Leaf should be my play, but that Pelt Collector has me kind of wanting to go Pelt Collector, Growth Chamber Guardian. Kind of want to do that, but Steel Leaf should be the play, so we'll play the Steel Leaf. So yeah, I wonder if I wonder if maybe Ban Arcbow should move towards... Elemental. Elemental arc bow. We need a green kitty. Interesting. You ever lost a home? I want to play this Champion of the Wild so that I get to start racing with the Steel Leaf Champion. I got a bunch of champions over here. And still be able to block with the card as well. I've seen squirrels hit harder. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me show you what was lost. I didn't really consider Chain Whirler whenever I was making that decision, though, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> Wait. You think nature is kind? Ugh, there's all my lands. We'll see how crazy this frenzy gets. Goblin Chain Roller is the only creature that gets that can block Steel Leaf Champion. Remember, the champion cannot be blocked by a creature's power two or less. So over here, that's their only one that can. Uh. We're not dead yet. If 
they have they have another burn spell, we're dead. But if they don't, this is just another land on top. We're not in a terrible spot. Because they have to chump block with Chain Whirler. Now. That's their only option. You fight like a city brat. I, I honestly don't know why they, they threw away that Firebrand. Because, you know, like, Firebrand would have been very nice for them. Um, we got to just hope, you know, like, they don't, don't have a very good Frenzy, of course, again this turn. I'll go this way so they can't just play one spell and kill the Vine Mare. That's odd that that was their top card and they didn't play that pre-combat. That's odd. Oh no. I guess they did, it. They did take three mana. Boom. <laughs> I I don't know law that you just you just witnessed the very first game of me of playing the deck. So I'm not really ready to declare how it matches up against other things right now. All right, so while the Vimeers do have Hexproof, they get blocked pretty efficiently, especially by Chain Whirler. You know, this this card changes that scenar that case, though. I think I want to go here. I, I don't want to have, like, too many 4-drops, and I want the Rip Jaws and the extra Chupacabra. So that's that's why the Vimeers are just kind of our cut here. Uh, yep, Paradise Druid, not good against Chain Whirler, of course. Let's try this. Galta is just huge in this matchup if we get to play it. Double black... I guess that's kind of tough for our deck without having Paradise Druid in, I suppose. That may be a little bit of an oversight. <laughs> well, the whole not playing any lands, that's good for us. Ooh. 
Ooh. Cult. Uh... Do you think Utopia Sprawl might somehow sneak its way back into standard one of these days? Probably not. Probably not. If I had to, you know, say, you know, like on the 50% chance which way. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised, though, if it if it did. But just as far as likeliness is concerned. Close your eyes, breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. We should probably split this up and have two different four toughness creatures. We've already seen that they've demonstrated be fun to watch. that they don't really care about bolting my creatures, though. Lucky for me, I like a fight. <laughs> Just gonna kill that thing. Watch out. They bite. All right, they're at five. Can they do seven damage to me here? We got three lethal attackers, including one that's like super lethal. Is super lethal a thing? I don't think that's a thing. Is that a card? Dream an Ashiok. Oh man, those creatures are so big. We didn't even get the, the Regisaur. The Rotting Reggie. Hey, Zerf. Happy Friday. Yeah, Fridays are cool. All right, so first match, our deck looked pretty impressive there, especially that second game. Definitely really liked having that Arcbow Ranger. Ugh. This hand would be perfect if, if these two Vivians were just lands. You know, if this was like Forest Forest, this was like perfect. I guess we would want a non-temple, I suppose. But let's try again. All right, we'll keep this. Uh, ship the Pelt Collector? Or no, the Paradise Druid. Yeah, we just we don't even need the Paradise Druid here. Ooh, Galta. Galta's worst matchup is Esper, and I guess this looks like this is Esper. Because they have efficient ways of killing it and killing all of our creatures. Okay, maybe not Esper. I kind of wish this was Paradise Druid right about now instead of Pelt Collector. Kind of. What an interesting creature. Let's see how you work. Hmm. I don't really want to discard stuff, so actually I'm gonna I'm gonna not play Rotting Regisaur yet. I don't really want to discard anything. You just gave me an idea. Yep, yeah, looks like Jeska, Super Friends. Which I don't hate so much that we're playing against Jeskai. Cause I fight with a dragon's rage! Hmm. Jeskai usually uses 
like deafening clarion and and little red removal spells and these things are definitely bigger than that I love everything from deer to dinosaurs so I can I can basically like make sure to you know I can I can kill their dragon and then have steel leaf kill their Sarkin but then my Vivian dies Um, or I can just, you know, put two counters on these things. I can just, like, make the Pelt Collector a 4-4, and then, you know, like, swing in with, like, a 4-4 and a 5-4 at these things, and then they could get to block, and if I have a, if I have both of them attack Sarkin, hmm, yeah, I think I'm just going kill this thing. With my aim and their claws, you're done. Kill that thing. Listen to them roar! How could I have lost? And then they they can kill my Vivian, but I think we get a pretty okay trade. Vivian takes out the Sarkin completely, plus one of their one ones. I need to hone my skills. So they playing a, a regular sweeper? I hope not. Usually they just play like Deafening Clarion's main deck. My yeah, we stomping. I guess I could have just gone Reggie and Galta last turn and just discard Paradise Druid. And just had this Reggie out a turn earlier. The the Reggie here does kind of protect my hand though against a sweeper. You know, if they do if they do have a sweeper, we'd at least have a seven six, I suppose. Doesn't really change the clock. I shall miss your company. I don't really see the reason to extend more out here. I mean, they could play like Teferi, Tuck Galta, and then I don't have Lethal, but just don't really need to do that. All right, Duress. Um, Carney T, Trophy, Find to return some stuff back. I don't know if we need find. Definitely Midnight Reaper. Uh, I guess they're going to have... They're going to have Lyra. If they have Lyra, I have Ranger and Reed and Trophy. So that's still a lot of things. So we can probably get rid of the Choops. Twenty-eight creatures. Hmm. Don't want to just cut six creatures. Fine mayor is kind of awkward here with Clarion. Yeah, Legion's end wrecks their tokens. It's true. I don't really have a favorite band or favorite musician. Yeah, I don't really have like a favorite, honestly. Usually I'd be taking out Galta against these control decks because like they're killing my things. But like their deck is a little bit different, but they should still just have 
a good amount of removal here. So yeah, we'll cut Galta. We're at 62 now. No, 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 no. Ah, it was it was not responsive enough. I tried to quickly take out the trophies. Decided that being the card to cut, but it was not responsive. And I ran out of time. All right, so we did sideboard. That's all right, though. Let's draw a land, and we have we have a killer hand. Get him, Reggie. Get him. How does Rotting Registrar not have a sweet animation? Look at how big this thing is. There's just no animation. That's disappointing. I'm disappointed. I've lost so much already. I won't lose. Starting over is the only way. Rough. Of course, we draw creature, draw creature, and then top three are not creatures. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the next card. Obviously, it's a creature again. After our Vivian Whiffed. Artifact, Incident, and Sorceries. Okay. It's hard to be a genius surrounded by lesser minds. <laughs> Strike now! Strike hard! Vigilance with mana creatures is always pretty cool. If that's your best. I needn't worry. It's definitely the coolest with Paradise Druid, of course. This is the hexproof. Keep it have he keeping it with hexproof. Down to one card in hand. Mm. We just keep on drawing creatures. I'm sure we're going to go just put some lands down to the bottom now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll just take this temple. Why not? <laughs> so we technically have two two cards exiled here with the Vivian. So, you know, it looks like on the opponent's side that we have two cards exiled that, you know, could be creatures, but they don't show up on our side. And then the bottom of our library is four lands, plus the land we have exiled. Trust me, you'll thank me later. 
Hold that thought. Why, Teferi? <laughs> even even with all of that, we were doing just fine until Teferi. I'd be less frustrated if you had fewer flaws. So we'll we'll have to shuffle the lands back. Hmm. Mobilize district. Yeah, I'm not liking that mobilized district over there. For the fallen. The growth chamber guardian has prevent all damage. So it's not doing anything. We'll just attack, see what they do. It doesn't actually do anything though. <laughs> yep. We still have not drawn lands. We've been really, really unfortunate with the Vivian. The Vivian minus both times just been all lands. Well, five of the six cards were lands. No time for a break. That was definitely the worst case scenario to see. Sorry, I'm late. Don't worry, I got this. There's probably not two cards that I wanted to see less than the two Teferis. I was pretty sure we were winning this game three turns ago, and. The turns could not be going any worse for us, so I guess we're not winning. We didn't have our green kitty. I can no longer stand by and watch. All right, let's try to actually sideboard this time. We didn't get to sideboard that game because I took too long. Um... What was I cutting last time? Did I cut the Vine Mares? I wonder if I'm supposed to cut Rotting Regisaur against Control. Like the, the whole discard a card at beginning of upkeep is is actually kind of a problem against Control decks. Because against Control decks it does kind of come down to card advantage. So maybe I'm actually supposed to cut this card against control. Yeah, I know I cut yeah, so I cut Pelt Collector and Trophy last time. How does that lead me with creatures? Only twenty two. Let's cut one trophy. We want our Vivian minus three to actually hit creatures, so we don't want to. We don't want to just take out all creatures everywhere. Hmm. This is definitely a key, but I don't know what to put down to the bottom. I guess a Vine Mirror.
<laughs> hey, Days and Amused. Yeah, Hawkeye's still just taking a nap in the closet where it was before. I'm, I've never seen him just take a nap in there. Yeah, it's just dark in there, and he's kind of curled up. wasn't meant to be contained. All things begin and end in nature. Bleh. This, this Champion of the Wilds has not been helping us out here in these two games. Not at all. Tear it down. Tear oh, I it should play down. the Paradise Druid first. Duh. Well, missed a point there. Oh, yeah. That's why we didn't... Yeah, we haven't had the green... Our green kitty cat. If you wish to home your prowess. Oh, and so, yeah, there's no reason for me to play this now because... Yeah, because we could just... Obviously, we could just have flash. So, yeah, I didn't. Um... So if I duress, I do not get to have, I do not get to actually play Vinemare. Let's see if we have another like three mana card. I've All right, seen so puppies wine less collector. than you. A mighty warrior, I concede. I kind of feel like Lyra will be, or sorry, that Sarkon would be hard, harder to deal with. Like, you know, the Clarion is a two for one, but, you know, Sarkon. It kind of feels like it could be just more difficult to deal with. There is wonder in a blade of grass. All right, I guess I should have grabbed Lanor Elf. <laughs> Thanks, Delta. I've seen worse. They've already used two uh, Clarions. They can't have that many Clarions. Let's tear this place apart. Let me show you what was lost. I definitely should be playing Vivian and then Minusing and then playing Temple and Scrying. That's did that out of order there. Strike now, strike hard.
So do I play the Growth Chamber Guardian now? And get an extra point in? Or do I not get that extra point in, but then also not have my Growth Chamber Guardian die to Sorcery Speed removal and or let my opponent know that, that it's coming? I think I wait and try to cast it Instant Speed. So they have less information. Well, that doesn't do anything. Mox Amber and Karn don't, don't do anything together. Oh, well, it does that, I suppose. Allow me to introduce you to a friend of mine. I suppose that is a thing it does. Have you ever lost a home? Don't know. So I either play Vine Mare and then keep my Pelt Collector alive, but then Karn's alive, or I activate Growth Chamber Guardian and kill Karn. I want to kill Karn. Not only do we kill Karn, but then we also have a backup Growth Chamber Guardian in case of removal here. Vigilant Land War Elf is like nice. We got five that. mana. So I, I do have the ability to flash in Growth Chamber Guardian and activate it, for example. Or I can play Pelt Collector Vine Mirror. Oh. Ugh, stop being a pain, Teferi. Seriously, they have a third Deafening Clarion? Well, that's really annoying. Here we go. The mysteries of life are endless. So I don't get to actually sit back and flash this thing in now because of the time waster over there. Thanks, Scientific. Saying your decks are ten times more interesting than most I see on Twitch. Thank you. Well, that's very kind words. I'm glad, glad I get to have some interesting decks. That's what I, that's what I try to do. So I think they scryed at the bottom. I didn't check too carefully there, though. They, of course, have the ability to minus their Teferi if they would like to rebounce Prison Realm. I've done the hero Which that's what they're going to do. It's a good call. Because they get, they get my other Vivian, basically. Good call there. We got the Bastion. Today I craft my victory. Not bad. For a yep, mouse. good play. Cool, having fun with the, the Grixis control. I I almost played that one again tonight, uh, but then decided to play Gruul because I wanted to play uh, New Vivian and New Chandra together. I wanted to really play New Chandra in a in a green deck that got to add mana, or like you know have some ramp for the New Chandra.
Certainly hoping they just draw a land here. That would be ideal. Just draw a land for a turn, please. Please. All right, so we have one card right now. This Vivian right here is private information. We have one card that's like tucked away over here that they think could be a creature. Okay, so they're gonna get rid of their Teferi. There goes nothing. Height. Draw another land. I need the other Vivian to give this Vine Mare a trample and put a counter on it. Not give up. Okay. Let's see if you're worthy. <laughs> I've seen puppies whine less than you. And now we actually get to play instant speed again. Starting over is the only way. Looks like they did draw the three lands in a row. That was really good for us. Or, or, or I guess they could have just had Sahili. Could have been their card in hand. Hmm. All right. G G. Or maybe G B. Is the green black deck. Good beats. GB. Day 2 update on the Omniteers deck that we played a couple of days ago. Completely destroys reanimator midrange decks. The white leyline edition in the sideboard. Super clutch against Grixis and Esper. Blocking uh, hand removal and unmourned ego. Unfortunately doesn't ha seem to have a real chance against mono red. Although it's possible to win with leyline. And cry the carnarium. All right. Game boy. <laughs> GB. Storm Tamer. Let's get this growth chamber guardian in play. Nah, we don't really need a shock. Yeah, good. Bye. Yeah, I definitely... Yeah, I think so, GG Stompy. Yeah, you know, like, we're doing our, our first test of the deck here. But, yeah, this, this deck definitely has potential. We got some good stuff going on here. I hope... Hard Esper Control pops up for our Karn Control that we have later on. Because that Karn Control deck doesn't really want to play against aggressive decks or creatures very much. Hmm.
So the main question is if I want to play the temple and scry for next turn, or if I want to play another land war elf. Um, which, honestly, I don't know exactly what I want to do. I guess another land war elf does help me uh, play growth chamber guardian and activate it and everything. And keep on getting more of those things in play. Let's go with that. Hey, Donahoe. Okay, Vivian was supposed to be able to grab creatures like Frilled Mystic, Knight of Autumn, other things. Okay. Yeah, that's, it's, yeah, definitely too slow to have that. Because, yeah, you have to, like, play it and tick up. And then, then you trade your Vivian for one of those creatures where you'd rather just have that creature. Yeah, that's, that's really slow there. But gotcha. Okay, so that's, that's what you want to do with the Vivian. There. Gotcha. Um. But yeah, no, the deck the deck felt pretty good, and yeah, I was I was impressed with Green Ley Line. I do think it's the best. I think the Green Ley Line's the best Ley Line, and yeah, I have to say that was impressive. All right, hopefully we can kill our opponent here, because we are probably dead on the way back. Surprisingly, they didn't play an island first before attacking. Do they just not? Do they have like a hand over there that doesn't have islands in it? Is that a thing, possibly? All right, so they, they definitely have to have Trickster here. If they don't have Trickster, they're dead. So they got to have Trickster. Yeah, and they just upkeep in. So they tap and steal. Steel reserved over there. All right, so this makes the Pulp Collector have Trample. I guess I just can't shock. Block here, block here. This doesn't really force them to block both creatures, though. This attack. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so all I have to do is play an island, and I lose. That was a good block. Good block. Speeds. They didn't play an island last turn, though. So maybe they, they don't have an island again. They didn't play one last turn. No, they played an island. Ugh. We didn't luck into them. Yeah, close race. We're two points off. Close race. All right, we'll definitely bringing in the Legion's End. So much for me cutting the Kral Harpooners from the deck. I was like, oh, nobody plays Mono Blue. I'll cut these Kral Harpooners. So much for that. I mean, Finality Suite, if that would resolve, that's probably not going to resolve, though, right?
So maybe I don't want Paradise Druid here. If I were keeping the Paradise Druids, the Carnage Tower would be an option. I like it a lot more on the play. It's really not that bad. I've had I've definitely had success with Carnage Tyrant against Mono Blue. Before. Come on, what are these hands? It's gotta be Choop. Okay, Woodland Cemetery. Um, what do you think of Galta in Golgari Reanimator? If you return another seven attack creature with Blood for Bones, you can pay five for it on turn five. So that's so you're saying uh, I don't know, maybe I should have just kept Woodland Cemetery and not been so greedy with that with that first temple scry. So you're saying that we, we already blood for bones and put a seven power creature into play and then that's not good enough, then we want a Galta to be able to pay play also. I feel like we should already be doing okay in that scenario and probably don't need the Galtas. Because just imagine all the other games like where you're not able to put big creatures into play with your anime deck and you don't have. And you know, you're just kind of turning your wheels and you're just sitting there with Galta. Land, please. Come on, draw land. Why can't we have nice things? I want to play this card. All right, got really punished for the first temple ditch in the the Woodland Cemetery. Should have just kept the third tap land. I was thinking that with the three draw steps after that, we could find, you know, an untapped land in the three draw steps. We didn't. I guess we're winning this race, I suppose. Not playing things is good against the deck that's trying to counter your stuff. So I guess it's kind of good that we're not playing things. Yeah, we got to hope that our opponent doesn't have Trickster this time. That was the card that swung them the the race the previous game. It was Trickster. Ah! 
Sup, Woodland, Woodland Cemetery. Don't really see us winning this. Oh, whoa. I guess there are no tricksters. Well, then. <laughs> Said, I don't see us winning this as our opponent's conceding. Wait, why am I not playing trophy here? Trophy's probably good. So, like, the biggest thing I like about this Vivian is giving our creatures reach. Let's play two of them. All right, game three, we did it. Hey, Redgrave. Ripjaw doesn't, oh yeah, just playing a creature just so we can give, we already have like other creatures we can give reach. We don't really need to give Ripjaw reach. Um, our opponent's probably not really blocking Ripjaw, just they'll just like tap a trickster or whatever. But yeah, it's it's smaller than our three drops. All right, well we got turn two, rotting Regisaur. We do not have turn three Vivian Arcbow Ranger because of the temple. Now we do. So we can discard temple or. Trying to counter my rotting register over there. It's rude. No. How do they beat this card? I don't think they can. We actually get to resolve this thing. Civilization has crept too far. Tear it down. My, my, how you've grown. I'm gonna make some big creatures. No, 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 no. You. 
All right, yeah, we're just going to kill the Steel Leaf champion or the, the Tempest Jin. Because without Tempest Jin, I mean, they really got nothing going on over here. So we'll just kill Tempest Jin. Hit him for hit him for four, even though they would be able to kill the Vivian. All right, three and O. Oh. Arco Ranger looked awesome there yet again. Yeah, don't want to kill the Steel Leaf. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a loss there, game two for sure. I felt pretty good the whole time of game three. But game two, thought we were losing. I'll just keep this one. We're on the draw, and we got this temple. So, like, we're probably going to be able to curve okay. And, and our opponent was going to six. Okay, maybe not. Maybe we're not curving okay still. Yeah. He's still an okay curve. Sure, not a, a turn one or a turn two, but three, four, five looking good. They have a good two, three, though. Can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, if I if I thought we we're going to be drawing three lands in our next four, including you know scrying a land at the bottom, I definitely would not have kept that hand. So if, four, if I knew four of the next five cards were lands after keeping five lands. Oh, have at it, boys. So nine out of 12. Yeah, I would not be keeping that, but. Oh, well. This doesn't look good for us. Rekindling Phoenix is really hard to beat. Because, yeah, that Paradise Druid just tra trades with the Vine Mare. And that Grows Pup Collector. Opponent mulliganed and got rewarded. I should have mulliganed myself, too. Wild animals, I've seen things that would break someone like you. Unfortunately, like, fortunately, all of these cards, are the bo those four bottom cards are horrendous. There's a whole bunch of lands in a land or elf. Fortunately, we're dead, though. All right, well, we have London Mulligan rule. Mulligan more. Should have mulliganed my hand. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Get these vine mares out of here. Um, yeah. All right, so we're just going to sideboard out those cards that we had in our hand. <laughs> like the only two cards that we had. Sideboard those out. And try again. I really like the London Mulligan rule. I think it's really good for standard. Yeah, maybe I should have find finality. We're, like, it's a good chance that a lot of things trade, so even just having the find to be able to get things back. 
Finality seems pretty slow, but maybe I need that against some phoenixes. So yeah, Pulp Collector grows quite a bit. Just traded the Growth Chamber Guardian with it since we were going to be really wanting to active, really use it right away. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. All right. Arcbow Ranger, quite strong. So they have Pelt Collector. That would be a reason for me to play Legion's End. Should probably play these trophies. Especially on the draw. Alright, I'm going to cut the three mana Vivians. They'll probably be too slow here too. Yeah, Arpo Ranger is awesome. The card's great. Very good card. Alright, let's draw some lands. Hopefully we get turn three Rippy. Rip turn three. Ranger turn four. Galt turn five. Hey, Duriel. Not a good draw. We need land. Yay. Definitely risky with a block. I don't know, they got some scary stuff going on here though. Didn't get there. This temple. Killing me. Killing me, temple. It's lethal. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of violence now. Alright, guess it just shouldn't have blocked. Good Heather the Ripshaw. <laughs> yeah, Storm, you, you got me there. The temple... The temple killed me there. I mean, to be fair, without the temples, it'd be really hard for me to play cards like Jupacabra and stuff. You know, have have as much green as I do and still have a lot of black. Our opponent had an awesome... Awesome curve, though. That game. Because they had Pell Collector on one, Pell Collector on two, Spellbreaker Haste on three, Removal on four, Removal on five, and I'm dead.
Lana Rolf just always trades for the Firebrand. I like doing that, like, doing that play of just blocking makes their light up the stages a lot worse. My favorite of the dual lands? Uh, my favorite's probably the temples. They're not the... Like, the best are the shock lands. The second best... Are, well, the other lands go really, really well with the shock lands. The buddy lands. But the temples are my favorite. Yeah, give me that 7-6. We need to try to win this game. Alright, here we go. Here's our power. Rotting Regisaur into Vivian Arc Vivian Arcbow Ranger. It's a two turn clock. I can make it three turns by minusing. Tear it down. And killing the Steamkin. With them being empty-handed, that's probably the safest thing to do. You picked the wrong fight. Because it's usually a two-turn clock because you get to attack for nine, then attack for eleven. We're it's like unblocked. It's, it's two turns. That game just ends so fast. That corner that corner is very sharp when you're trying to turn that thing. Yeah, there's no control today and that's we have not been playing against control today. That's not good for the Karn control deck. Really hope we don't face a whole lot of aggro with the Karn control deck. Because it's basically just an all-colorless deck, and it's it's really hard to... There's not a lot of good colorless cards against aggro, TBH. There's Vial of Dragonfire. It's true. You're not going to outgreen Kitty Us. Everything costs one mana. I have two one mana divinations, two lightning bolts.
No, draw that third land. Means we get to Steamkin first. Paradise Druid also dies to, to Chain Whirler. If you stabilize with some other stuff, Growth Chamber Guardian. So the question is, is Growth Chamber Guardian better than Paradise Druid? If you stabilize with some other cards, Growth Chamber Guardian does turn into 4-4s four to get more 4-4s. Four and 4-4s four are really... Those are good. Well, we're at one. No, we're at three. Okay, they did not attack. I have to play Chupacabra this turn, but then it's the following turn. What do I want to play? Rift Draw seems too slow. They just have yet another three damage burn spell. They do. All right, game three. I like our chances here on the play. You know, our our curves beat their our pro probably our best curves beat their best curves. Probably. I don't know. We get some really big creatures out there. Oh man. I kinda wanna mulligan this. I have to like shock twice. If they just kill my Lanoir off on turn one, we're like dead. Ugh. No, nah, it's not a it's not a mulligan. Steel Leaf traded with three cards, but also basically six life also, but all the shock lands and everything. Steam can. That card's really good. They're pointing at my Growth Chamber Guardian. Let's just fire off the dog. Unleash the dog. All right, no, no shock. Good job, puppers. They're tapped out, so let's make sure this works. So we pay three mana to reduce two, and then we have three mana left. Yeah, this works.
We get to do one more point of damage here instead of attacking with Llanowar Elf. We get to attack with two more power with the Growth Chamber Guardian. Galta should be able to finish this one up. A little stomp stomp. All right, well, we lost to the final boss last time. Can we get revenge? Johnny's Pride lost to the final boss. Can Golgari Stompy get revenge and defeat the final boss? The Super Dino. All right, here's our final boss playlist. Get in the zone. Final boss zone. Gonna need my final boss emotes. Here we go. What do we got? Green kitty. No. Green kitty. We were playing like clumps of the same deck in these leagues, and that's that's really unfortunate because you know, like you know, when watch watch the deck play through a league, like you want to play the different decks in the league. Like last deck we just played against Blue green mass manipulation three times. This deck we're playing against mono red three times. Did I have the. I just drew that overgrown tomb, right? Yeah, I think I just drew that card. Cannot get through the alpha. Or it's not the alpha, it's the rotting. When people start screaming, sit back and watch it burn. No matter, can't get through it. Assuming they're gonna block shoot me, but I don't mind them doing that because that means that a three damage burn spell doesn't kill the Steel Leaf Champion. Because, of course, with having the Galta here, we want the Steel Leaf Champion to survive. Better be a two, two mana spell. No, it's a one mana spell. Ugh. No. Ugh. Well, being at five instead of at ten, with them still having the Pyromancer out, is probably not ideal for us anyway. Like, it's probably worth trading in five life for that five four. I mean, maybe not. Like, I'm not Get sure. Back and watch it burn. Yeah, we lose to the Chandra. 
So no, it, it wasn't worth it wasn't I should have taken the five. Cause then we didn't get to play the Galta. Choose your character. Well, at least we got our sideboarding down. Lucky you're facing us for control. I'll face us for control. If we're on the draw, I wouldn't keep this. On the play, I think we, we could maybe get there. On the draw, I definitely would not be keeping, like, do nothing until turn three. Ooh, that's good. I didn't have anything on turn one. That's good for us. Please draw land. Can't actually cast anything in our hand. Please draw land. Yay. And they missed a land drop. Taking it. We stomping. This is where Steamkin is kind of messed up. So much for the two lands. Mizium tank? This is the perfect time to only have the two lands. They just get to cast everything in their hands. Yeah, they spent 13 mana there, and they still had three more they could have spent. Mizium Tank is not good.
I mean, we we could Pelt Collector plus something else, but... Those were not good draws. Yeah, they don't have anything super impressive going on, but... Well, there we go. I was going to say, they probably have a Frenzy coming up. I was going to say... Yay. So, of course, I can trophy the Frenzy, but I can also trophy... Okay, I was going to say, I can also trophy if they, if they try double blocking. Frenzy with just two mana isn't really that scary, though. If I Chupacabra a Steam Can here. They're at one. We got three creatures now, and they have to deal with, like, the Steel Leaf and everything. Uh, yeah, there they hit their two lands, because they hadn't seen lands in so long, so they hit the two lands there. Okay, game three. We're on the draw. Which is the so this is the, going to be the tough, the really tough game to win. Hmm, a little slow. Good card. Take another. Please, Legion End, can I have another? Any more Steamkins over there? No, nope, no more Steamkins. There's a Chandra. Probably need to dress away the Chandra next turn. Mobilized District? That card's cool. So much damage. So much damage. No, I don't have any Cryo Canariums in the sideboard. So I could have played Ripjaw, but they, you know, they use two burn spells on a Ripjaw. That's probably good for me. It's a little good for me, I suppose. That's what I meant. It's a little good for me. Um, but then they, you know. They could have like a big steamkin there and kinda who knows where that goes. Chain whirler. Chain whirler is annoying. First strike plus burn spell to kill rotting regisaur. Good thing they have a mobilized district.
yeah, this mobilized district really, really hurt my opponent. I'm thinking we're gonna do it. Oh, maybe not. Are they double bolting? Okay, they're double bolting. They didn't have the mana for Legion's End. And that and Legion's End doesn't actually do anything. There. Tube. More dinos. Still sad it doesn't have a cool animation. Still sad it doesn't have a cool animation. Victory! Five one. So we, <clears throat> turned out we were pretty good against Mono Red. Uh, beat Mono Red three times. We also lost to. We did lose to go or uh, Gruel Aggro. We got out aggroed by Gruel one game, one match. Uh, the game one of the match that we lost was I kept a really really bad hand. And lost with my opponent mulling to five, so we learned our lesson about mulliganing with London Mulligan rule. <clears throat> that was our match that we lost. And then we beat a control deck, we beat Esper. And those were our those were our matches. So didn't play it against like the, the biggest variety of stuff. Uh, our Vine Mares didn't really get to shine since we played against so many aggro decks. Yeah, our Vine Mares didn't really shine there. Um, but yeah, Red Source, and we also played against Mono Blue. So yeah, we played against five aggro decks and then one Espa. Oh no, it wasn't even Espa, it was Jeskai. It was Jeskai. Jeskai Control. Um, yeah, Regisaur, Regisaur was pretty good for us. It was just so big. Um, the upkeep discard wasn't so bad. There wasn't really any times like where that upkeep discard affected us a whole lot. I did take it out against the control deck game three to try to not, you know, to try not to lose card advantage against the control deck, but you can either play this Regisaur like right away on turn two and try to get an easy win with it, or just even waiting a little bit till like later on when you play the rest of your hand and, you know, double spell with like something else plus three mana seven, six to kind of empty out your hand and it's still just great in the late game right because it's still a seven six creature it's so big uh so it's still very good in the late game arcbow ranger like like we thought was fantastic the minus three uh just you know got to kill kill important creatures the plus one um just made these things just unkillable basically just made them so big our other two Vivians weren't that good because we were playing against, but we were playing against all aggro decks, and so we were just sideboarding out the other Vivians all the time. Um, this Vivian in particular wasn't super special, but against the Jeskai deck, we got to play so many things at instant speed. Even though the minus two missed quite a few times, we got to play just all of our cards at instant speed in those games, and it really helped us out. Um, So there we go there. Uh, Golgari Stompy, pretty sweet. The Legion's Ends were good in the sideboard. Yeah, pretty good looking deck here. I liked it. Um, I like Paradise Druid more than Incubation Druid. 
because while in while incubation druid can add more mana whenever you put like counters on it with vivian and stuff you don't really need to add a lot of mana you don't really need that excess of mana i like paradise druid i like the attacking um paradise druid works really well with champion of wilds giving it vigilance so you can attack with hexproof especially when you're attacking other planeswalkers and like the the blue white decks that's an awesome uh combination there and then also Paradise Druid grows your Pelk, your Pelk Collector right away. You know, you play turn one Pelk Collector, you play turn two Paradise Druid, you grow your Pelk Collector. That's a strength of the card also. I think Paradise Druid's a better card in this deck. Um, there we go. All right. Uh, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But that's it here for Golgari Stompy. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for another video.